to finish off, I've met this man only recently, and I said some really crappy things to him online. But the moment I met him, I really thought, I really, really love this guy. And that, it made me realize that the digital platform's not for us. Like, this is more like it. And I'm amazed at how he can just manifest thousands of movie quotes that are relevant to what we're going on right now. And so I hope you enjoy this very unique spark that is Vinny Eastwood to close us out. Give him a hand. being deplatformed and they chose to censor their speech, chose to stop letting people on their platforms who might get them censored, I still kept doing it. <laughs> Am I an idiot? Yes, but, <laughs> but I didn't do it because I was an idiot. I did it because it was the right thing to do and it needed no further justification than that. The things you learn in life, ladies and gentlemen, it is true that the most valuable lessons in life will be those that cost you the most. I have been on tour for but one week with Counterspin Media. Dot com. <laughs> <laughs> and I've said this every time that they've let me speak. Uh, that had I worked as hard as I've seen them working for the 15 years that I've been broadcasting, telling the truth, I would already be dead. <laughs> Strength, courage, honor, these are not words, these are a way of life. For 15 years, I felt like I was the only New Zealander who had a platform that was being used on a daily basis to get the truth out to people, and I felt so alone and so sad that my country and my countrymen hadn't the courage to join the fray, to do the work that needed to be done. These two, this team, all those who have contributed, you don't know what it's like to have no hope and then suddenly it comes back. <laughs> one act by one person at any time, no matter how sad you are, no matter how down you are about your perspectives on reality, no matter how pessimistic you are about your fellow man, one act can restore your faith immediately that this is not a lost cause for there is still at least one fool left to fight it. <laughs> Facing persecution, demonization, attacks, left, right, and center, they have. Have they wavered? No, they have not. They have the strength to endure, and they prove it to you. Every single day, every broadcast that they do is living embodiment, an epoch of strength. That is what has restored my faith. That is what has given me my courage back, and I hope only that you 
will feel the same way that they have made me feel. Do you feel it? Donate to carnospinmedia.com, right? <laughs> But don't just donate. There are many ways to contribute. Think about this. There is a $30,000 bill estimated for the completion of this tour. We are on but event seven of, what is it, 33 events or something of that nature? 36 events for $30,000? That is bang for your buck. And it is due in no small part to the significant amount of you who are contributing financially, sharing the links, and going to counterspinmedia.com, <laughs> downloading those apps. And you guys in this room, you showed up. Do you have any idea how important that is? That you made the effort to come here to listen to them and to listen to the other great speakers that we had tonight. Depression, defeatism, that is the way to defeat your enemy, it is said, to make them believe that they already have lost. <coughs> we must defeat the defeatism within ourselves, and we must look to those who give us inspiration. But it does not end there. Somebody asked me once, Salvini, is the earth flat or is it round? And I said to them, well, I think it's a holographic fractal projection of collective consciousness experiencing itself subjectively. And they were like, whoa. <laughs> This is the structure of reality. If I take a picture of this audience right now and embed it into a hologram instead of a hard drive and try to delete it, the whole picture of all of you is still there. Just half the resolution. If I try to delete it again, all of you, still there. Half the resolution. Nothing you do and nothing that exists can ever be forgotten. The fractal. You look inside your finger, you will find cells. Inside those cells are other cells. Inside those cells are other cells. Infinitely down the chain and as above, so below. We are the cells on this planet. Our planet is a cell in this galaxy. This galaxy is a cell in the universe. The universe is a cell in a much larger organism we haven't even got a concept for yet. Everything's just a smaller or larger version of something else. The collective consciousness, these guys did this thing called a double slit experiment. They showed a proton through these two slits. What they figured would happen, it would go bang, bang. But it didn't. It went bang. It made a little waveform pattern. They're like, man, that's very interesting. Let's put a little camera here and see how that happened. Bang, bang. The particle reacted differently because it knew it was being observed. Like our little friend down here. It got stage fright. <laughs> Everything has a little bit of consciousness. Protons, neutrons, electrons, even morons. <laughs> we are co-creating our reality together. Us as fifth dimensional consciousness beings. What does that mean? First dimension's a dot, second dimension's a line, third dimension's a box, the fourth dimension is that box moving through time. The fifth dimension is where all your thoughts are right now while I am speaking. They don't really exist. They are not yet manifest until you spend your time willing your thoughts into three-dimensional reality. Only there do they have value. Only there can other people see and smell and taste and touch what you have built. You may not be the prime beneficiary of what you bring into this world during your time here. It may be several generations before the things you do now matter to somebody else that trigger their ideas, that change reality. That is how important you are to the structure of the universe itself. For as the Greeks said, your job in life is to plant a tree who 
whose shade you know you shall never get to sit beneath. Do not be disheartened. Do not be defeatist. Have strength, courage, and honor like Calvin and Hannah over here, like Tim Zulu, like all of the volunteers and my lovely Rebecca. This is what we are all here to do. The right thing. Because it is the right thing to do. And it requires no further justification, does it? Let's get angry about this. <laughs> Anger is better than despair. The network speech from 1976 reflects, I believe, what we feel today. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their jobs. Dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going by. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street and there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do with it. There's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. We sit there watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house and slowly the world is getting smaller and we say, please, just leave us alone in the living rooms. Let me have my toaster, my TV, and my steel belted radios and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to riot. I don't want you to write to your MP because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the inflation, about the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. Yes, yes. <laughs> I want you all to get up now. I want all of you to get out of your chairs. Go to the window. Open it. Stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. <laughs> Things have got to change. You've got to get mad. You've got to yell at the top of your voice, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Come on, yell it out, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Do it. Come on, I'm mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Throat is sore now. <laughs> uh, these are the sacrifices that must be made in order to do what must be done. Whatever the sacrifice, whatever the cost of victory, ladies and gentlemen, is a price I'm willing to pay. And if I'm the only one, then so be it. But I'm willing to bet that I'm not. <laughs> 